Hello, welcome to tonight's episode of Curse of Strahd. Tonight shall be very, very interesting. Let us meet our folks who are playing tonight. Uh, so we have joining us Dravidigus. Dravidigus, that was your cue to say hi. Hello and good evening. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> oh. even though you're about to die, I mean... At least have the courtesy to say hi. Uh, we have Ko oh, ah, yeah. Uh, Rick Tavio. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> we got a <laughs> Things mistro. happen. Yeah, things happen. Please and salutations. And Alise. Alise. Uh, he's still not going on. Oh, there he is. He's here. Yeah, where have you been, oh, yeah. you, you You haven't been listening, have you? Well, welcome, everybody. So... Uh, Let's paint a picture, shall we? Because I didn't write an intro this week because I thought the picture kind of like painted itself by being on this map. Uh, we were greeted in Valaki after a long rest by none other than Rahadin, who delivered a lovely letter to let you know that somebody's getting married and everybody's excited. Rictavio, knowing that you guys are desperate for allies, insisted that we get Esmeralda involved. Even though he doesn't want to, he knows we could probably use the help. Um, what all happened in Valaki before we left? Was there something I'm missing? Uh, Mikro doing the rogue stuff to get potions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then very, very carefully getting caught. <laughs> I got caught. However, I did the one t good time I ever did this, and I deceived my way out of a paper bag. Good job. Yeah, that's right. Deception checks are a thing. By the way, I'm kind of like picking kernels out of my teeth because I have my pre-popcorn before game because you know this is going to be a show and a half. Uh, <laughs> so you guys right. made your preps, did what you could to get ready, and time was of the essence after you got that letter that you literally dr had Esmeralda drive you guys to Castle Ravenloft and hope to finish your long rest once you reach the out side of the grounds you were able to achieve such and at which you were able to launch a strike at about four in the morning right we leveled you also leveled yep <clears throat> gave you the opportunity to level up because yeah i knew where you were going and i felt like that was well deserved uh upon entering though like everything opens up to you the doors open the whole place lights up and you're all welcomed in and you can see several people already Standing at the top of the stairs, even Lady Walkner seemed to have been out and about talking to the Lord of the house as it were and They greeted you at first and said if you wish to Partake in a bedroom above they were willing to set you up, but instead You uh, greeted Strahd by saying let me see if I remember We're not here for a wedding. We're here for your funeral and Dravidicus started the charge. Is that about right? Oh, that's yeah, exactly okay. right. I'm not so yeah. sure it was a we as so yeah, much as a Draviticus. Like yeah, it was more of a Draviticus thing, but yeah. If it was, mm. if it was cinematic, I'd be, I'd be whispering to guys, hey guys, be cool, be cool. And then Draviticus goes, we're here to kill you. <laughs> and he turns yeah, well. to Koi and says, I am being cool. Wasn't that a cool line to say? <laughs> <laughs> Battle broke out. You guys are engaged. Draw just kind of like, ugh, disappears for a while. Just kind of like let everybody else do the hard work. And Raha Dean, along with the brides, managed to corner Koi. And getting revenge for pushing him down the last time they met, Raha Dean returns the favor and sends Koi to the great beyond. Uh, there were opportunities to try to get to him. However, he rolled a natural one on his first death save and He was Feeling kind of like fate. You know and then his turn and the order of healing just was not in his favor. We thought he might be able to say but Oh, well, so Koi will be playing the role of Rictavio tonight and uh, I think this is where we come back because you did manage to kill off a few of the brides along with Escher and Strahd's not happy about that as he appears from underneath the ground appearing in the battlefield 
and he takes note of everything around him and sees that his brides have been devastated a bit but sees that Rahadin is still currying the fight we kind of like see him say well I see that the uh, house needs to defend itself and as if that word was to acknowledge anything of importance ah I know, before I do this, before I do this, let me read to you the description of this room because that was my main intent. All right, so. Cobweb stretch between the columns that support the vaulted ceiling of a great dusty hall dimly lit by sputtering torches in iron sconces. The torches cast an odd shadow across the faces of eight stone gargoyles squatting motionlessly on the rim of the domed ceiling. Cracked and faded ceiling frescoes are covered by decay uh, the double doors that are off to your off to the east are closed to the north a wide staircase where the one and only Strahd is standing a lit hallway to the south contains another set of bronze doors through which you heard uh, well no that was whenever you first got here you would have heard the organ but you are here for the second time and you know I mentioned the gargoyle statues because uh, they start to move and flap their wings and then all these fire sconces kind of like go out. However, I believe your party has adequate light sources of varying types or can see in the dark, right? Yes. Yes. Or, okay, so I'm just going to reveal all these loverly statues that have no already been. Yep, yep, all eight of these. And they start to shake. And then there's like a big brief wind that just escalates throughout the room and we see all the torch lights just whoosh, except for the light sources that you carry with you. Hmm. Alright, now here's the, here's where I have been debating. Should I amp things up to the point of no return? Because I feel like this is pretty... <sighs> you know what? I'm going to take a chance. I am going to take a chance. And we're going to try to make... Alice, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, this is against a charm effect. So if you have any bonuses, you have advantage, I believe. Yes. And he stares at you and says, Why don't you assist me in this defense? So we're going to attempt the charm and elf, which worked. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Ah, oh, man. Yeah, this fight just got harder, Dravidicus. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I thought uh, his fate ancestry... Let me double check here. It gives him advantage on being charmed. It doesn't keep okay, him okay. from being charmed. <laughs> I was double checking. Alright, so... On that fail, the target regards Strahd as a trusted friend to be heeded and protected. The target isn't under Strahd's control, but it takes Strahd's request and actions in the most favorable way and lets Strahd bite it if he wants. Oh dear God, you're a you're a meat sack for me now. Oh no. So uh, not technically. I've haven't well, been a I mean, meat sack for anybody else that's been my friend. Yeah, that's true. Well, he kinda like walks past you and says, I believe I can let you handle this. Take the lead for me and See to it that your friends don't get to me. They're a little barbaric, as you can see, making a mess of my hall. <laughs> Which kind of like... See what I can do. Next. Yeah, yeah. So now he lets you go ahead and take your turn. I did not expect um, that to work. <laughs> so... so... What are you thinking? Me, all right. Fifteen. I could drop some help stuff uh, if you need it. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna be like, you know, hey guys, maybe we should, uh, you know, maybe we should, we should stop this. <laughs> Might be a more peaceful resolution. To all of this bickering and fighting. Make a persuasion. I'm going check. to try to like. Uh, Persuade him. <laughs> Seek some reason with with Draviticus here. 
Okay. Oh. Uh, do make a persuasion, though. It's not against Draviticus, but like Esmeralda's listening to you from the top of the stairs, like, what? So go ahead and make that. That's a pretty good persuasion, yeah. Uh, she persuade. Oh, she's got a little bit of an insight. Okay. What are you talking about? You, I thought you guys were. And she's kind of like confused. She doesn't know what's happening. But look, we're all friends here. There's no reason to be fighting. You know, it's probably a big misunderstanding. Like he said, once Octavio can once this is all over, too. we can we can right. leave. It's what we've all wanted in the first place, is to just get out of here. And he's giving us that opportunity. Let's not Absolute. look... Absolute. Let's not look Let's at the words in the mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the this is... Oh, yeah. Rictavio, you can tell he's charmed. <laughs> <laughs> the straw's Absolutely. words coming from his mouth. Been enchanted. Charmed. All right. Is there anything else on your turn there, Alice? Or is that it? Uh, I, I guess I would be, uh, you know, ready to make a like a subduing attack against the first person to make a hostile action against another person. All right. What would that attack entail? Like, is it physical, or are you preparing a spell? Uh, no, I would be using my bow to try to disarm them or something. Oh, that's right, that's right, your ranger. My bad, my f I'm trying, I don't know why, but for a moment there I thought you were a druid, which I was like, no, I'm really not going to get this wisdom save, but hey, I did it. Uh, Meet Grow. He's an arcane archer, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I, an I arcane archer. Now. I, I got, it's the token that threw me off. Mm. Don't worry about it. Go ahead, Meet Grow, what do you got? Well... I'm gonna go ahead and take my action to down a potion of healing. That's 2d4 plus 2, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. 5, six, 7. Mm-hmm. And that's just a bonus action. Wait, I thought it was an... That's no, if right you're is. using it on yourself, it's a bonus action, as we have mm -hmm. rolled in all of my games. Uh, if you give it to somebody sword. else. Yeah. For my action, I would like to reignite the sunblade for going down. I mean, you don't have to use an action. I think you just use it, oh. and it'll light up. You just gotta go find something to swing it at. Or you can use your action to extend the radius of the light. Remember to like read the item. Oh yes, please do read your item. Make sure you know everything that you got because I have a lot of stuff on my end. I need you to do your homework too. It's the sun. No, it's just a point. Yeah, okay. It's kinda odd that they have both of those in here. Let me see if they do the same thing. No, you got the Sunblade. Sunblade. Okay. Or actually, you have the Sun Sword. Yeah. There's no Sun Sword in the compendium. It, it's in the regular manual. Mm. Just type Sun Sword in the... Uh, or here, here. Here you go. I could probably do this. Oh, maybe it's only visible to me. No, it showed it to me. It yeah, but it doesn't me. show you the stats, does it? No, no. it doesn't. No. Alright, yeah. Uh, so... What alignment are been... you, by chance? I'm kind of curious now, I'm looking at this thing. I'm neutral evil. Oh. Mm. Okay, just just reading a couple more things here to see right. if I need no, to reveal I, this. Shit. But don't worry, I think everything else is fine with the uh, sun fucked blade. Up, I fucked up. What did you do? I accidentally oh. clicked initiative. So you don't want to turn anymore? Is that what you're telling no. me? No, no. Don't worry, you're still in the same slot, I believe. Yep. No, it put me behind, uh, Mister. Huh. 
right hand man. And oh, your yeah. action. Oh, my action? Uh... Yeah, what was your initiative since you jinxed it on me? Hold on, you know what? I actually have the notepad still open. It was 22.18. Alright. That's right. 22.18. Yeah, I had to write these down earlier to redo the initiative order. And I right. will hold my action to attack Mr. Right Hand Man whenever he, or if he attacks myself or Octavio. You're gonna wait? <laughs> like. That suits him just fine, because as a bonus action, I need you and Rictavio to make a save of sorts. Let me go check his thing. That'll be, be my attack because of the save. Well, first, I get to hit you, so... Because yep, this mentally fair. attacks you, he's not showing you anything yet. Uh, so he, you hear the loud cries of death screaming across you, and I need both of you to make wisdom saving throws as psychic damage is thrown at you. Wow, that was a low roll, buddy. All right, so you both take four points of damage. You made the save, and um, damn it, he got really lucky on that. All right. Would I recognize that he just took an offensive action? Because mm. I know that he no has the sight. ability. No line of sight. He's got line of sight. He's at the top of those stairs. Uh, technically, this here doesn't show him doing anything aggressive. You just see Rictavio and Micro react in a way to something mentally hitting them. But, like, he didn't physically... Like, him himself didn't physically do anything. However, I'll give you a chance to realize he does something here in just a second. So, Micro attacks, which helps me make a choice. So, what did you hit? Uh, I don't see your... Oh, 17? Let me see if that... Nope, you missed. It's a 27. Advantage oh. with Rictavio. Oh, yeah, that's right. Rictavio there. Okay, so that means he takes a bunch of damage. Mm -hmm. And you have earned his undivided attention. So you see Micro attack, and then all of a sudden you see him starting to go after Micro, because now he knows who's doing the damage. Uh, these but are hidden. I do roles. know that he has the ability to, like, do that to other people. Right. The dude isn't, like, retarded, right? So. Right. I've seen him use this attack before. I know it doesn't require much, and I see both of them react the way that I've seen them react to like. Well, I was about to say you also see him strike Micro in the same round. So if you want to go ahead and fire off a reaction to that, go for it. Well, like I said, it would be the first person who I saw take an action. So I'm just asking for the GM ruling. Am I? Do I know that he has used his uh, his ability against them? As well, let's, okay. First? So what do you plan to do though? Because it would this either be of... hit him or hit me, bro. Yeah, like I, mean, I said, it would be the first of... person to, to take an offensive action. I mean, to you, it looked like Micro did the first thing. Alright. Sorry, dude, but that was that was literally what I was holding action on. Yeah. Do I not get an insight roll to see if, like... You're charmed to anyway, that he did and it? Rahadine's... Not by him. Uh, no, not by him, but, you know, by acquaintance, you know. That's a friend of a friend, but... A friend of a Mi friend versus a companion. Micro? Micro? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'll let you roll sure. an inside check. Yeah, go for an inside. I got a DC of 18 for you. Alright, All right. hit the bird. Sorry, Micro. <laughs> All right, that hits. <laughs> oh, Dang no! Hey, I'm just gonna. It's a duel. <coughs> okay, so yeah. Like try, like I said, I'm trying to like knock the weapon out of his hand. I was trying Unfortun to disarm whoever you, is attacking. You, you can't do subdue damage with ranged weapons. Uh, I understand, and but I did. It's say not I even gonna to, like, matter because Rahadin yeah. swings next at Micro and he takes two death fails. Oh, well, I'm trying to figure out because I still have oh. my reaction. Uh, I one oh, of the damages. well, you could catch the arrow if you're a monk. Oh, oh you're not a monk, I'm are you? Damn, that's no. a different, that's a different day, that's ain't it? a different character. Uh, can you, okay, so let's see here. 23 divided by half is pretty much 11. Uh, 11. 11. Yep. So I'm going to 
so I am still standing. From you the take arrow. ten points more damage from Rahadin. So now you're unconscious. Ah! To be fair, that did kind of save you from taking two death fails because if he got you on the ground beforehand, you would have had a eleven twenty advantage that would have hit. Uh, what's your AC again? Oh, never mind. You're at two fails. I didn't realize your AC was sixty. Why would it have still been two fails? Because he hit you twice. Oh. Yeah, one to knock you to the ground, and then one and then to one. stab you while you're down. Uh, so you hear a loud clicking noise from here and here. You know what? I'm just going to let this play out as is. The statues just dance around the hall and just kind of like slowly make their way. Like they're doing the creepy, yeah, Strahd's got this. He doesn't need much from us. We're just going to be here for show. So we're going to let the gargoyles just kind of like dance around and just kind of like be a distraction. So yeah, that's what they'll do. However, Strahd's bride will definitely strike out at Draviticus. Maybe I'm being too kind. You know what? The next one, I won't be so nice. So, two claws at Dravidicus. Miss and, and miss. And the bite hits. Take uh, nine piercing and seven necrotic. Your max health is reduced by the necrotic damage taken. So, you cannot heal for seven of those health points that you just taken from that. Nine and seven is sixteen. All right, Rick Tavio, I got a guard goal that wants to uh, do something. He's not following the convention of what's going on here. He he wants to he wants to practice swing on somebody. So he's going to make a bite and a claw attack on Rick Tavio. Ooh, and a crit. Mm. Oh yeah, he had advantage. Damn. Okay. 